welcome back to another installment of My First Pet Reptile, brought to you by Jace Exotics. Of course, I'm Jay, I'm yours truly, and today we're going through hatchling care from the egg to about 10 grams. So I'm going to break each section down to how uh, you can take care of each stage of life on a crested gecko. So today, we're looking at crested gecko hatchling care, so stay tuned. <laughs> guys so welcome back of course I'm Jay Nieves I'm here um, to talk about hatchling care so today you you started already breeding your crested geckos you got eggs you did me incubated them for two to three months depending on the weather and the temperature and you got hatchlings ah, so now everybody's like you're freaking out what to do um, for, for reptiles crested geckos are actually the easiest and to me the most rewarding than any other other species. Of course, I love gargoyle geckos, lychees, and so on. Uh, it's just that crested geckos are just so animated, so different, and that's why I love them there. So when you start up your setup, um, you get them from the egg, and of course, they remember that crested geckos, or anything that comes out of an egg, is disoriented right off the bat. It has to fend for itself, it's coming out of the egg, and it's a whole new world. You know, it has to learn how to breathe on its own and so on, all on its own. So, the first thing you do is, you know, I usually let, if you usually get a clutch of two eggs per crested gecko. Um, what I normally personally do is, I, I let, I leave that crested gecko in there normally for like a few hours just to get its bearings right in the incubation medium. Also, it is, there's been theories where the other egg will make the sibling kind of hatch faster just because it's out there, it can hear it, you know. So that's some of the theories out there. So I used to leave it there for, you know, six to eight hours um, just, you know, to see if the other egg hatches. If it doesn't hatch, I put it into a simple enclosure. So my enclosure, I use one of the six quart uh, crested gecko cages that I built myself that I'll put in and you know picture above so what I do is um, I put something very simple so it has I drill holes all around the cage all around the box on the top and also I I put uh, mesh bigger holes with mesh and I'll show you in a different video how I make my hatchling uh, sweater boxes uh, enclosures so and then I put a paper towel and I use egg crates as for them to hide and some of my um, hatchling things have little ledges or uh, pool, uh, pool noodles so they can climb on and escape from the other one just in case they're bothering each other. Now for the first five days, crested gecko hatchlings don't, they don't eat. They still absorb in um, most of their egg sac. They still have enough uh, energy for those five days. Even though I do put uh, food in there just in case they want to eat. Now, one thing that I do is, you got to make sure that they, they go through their fetch first shed correctly. So that's very important. So in those five days, they're going to shed their first skin. Uh, and that's important because if that shed's not removed correctly, you have to remove it yourself. Because what happens is that if it gets stuck, especially on the toes, they can lose their toes. They can even lose their tails. So sometimes a lot of the tail loss comes from those first five days where the skin stays on and it actually constricts and they lose circulations and then they, they come off. So the first five days are more important because that's actually going to tell you if you're able to, if it's going to survive pretty much. That first shed is just very, very important. So when I put the eggs in, I spray, I mean, I'm sorry, take the eggs, take the, <laughs> the hatchling out, I'll go in and take it out and actually spray down um, the, the enclosure. Now I keep both 
the siblings together in the same enclosure. Now, sometimes if, if I have more than one um, crested gecko uh, hatchling, um, I'll put them all together. So I put a maximum of six hatchlings into an enclosure because my enclosures are actually pretty big and tall. Um, but I do prefer to remove them um, uh, on pairs of two. So I put the siblings together, just easier for me to track. Um, I keep a tag on everything usually that I, that I raise myself so I know where they come from. My crested geckos are so much different from each other. So by looking at the hatchlings, I can tell which parent comes from what because I don't have that many breeding pairs. I only have six breeding pairs. Um, so I, I understand which one comes from each one. Now the, the other thing that, I, that people say is a big controversy that I do slightly different is that I want to keep my crested gecko hatchlings desensitized meaning that I like them to be able to know that I'm a human and I mean no threat to them. So I'll go in, I don't handle them, like pick them up all the time, but I go in, check on them, know that I'm there, and so on. A lot of people just say leave them alone, you, they're going to pretend you're a predator, they're going to be all stressed out. You know, they're, they're going to be stressed out regardless because they're pesticide geckos. They're, they're flighty because they're babies and they, they think that someone's going to eat them but I want to make sure that they know that I'm not going to eat them. So I pretty much <laughs> handle them pretty often. Like not handle them, but just go in their enclosure every time I feed them, check on them, make sure none of them are doing bad. Takes a little longer time, but that's, you know, you're a Crested Greco beater. You have to be able to, you know, do that. Now, feeding. I use little tiny contact cases, and you'll see the picture above. Crested Geckos don't eat a lot. So what happens? They, they're about an inch big to two inches big, depending on the crested gecko. Their stomach is the size of a pea, if not smaller. So they're not going to eat a lot. So how can you tell if your crested gecko is eating? Let's find a sample. It's the poop. Poop is a good thing. So if they're pooping, they're, they're actually eating. So for the first, uh, after the first five days, what I normally do is, yeah, as you'll see in the video above, I take a little bit of food that I fed them and then put them on top of their little snout, their little nose, and have them lick it. So that, that does two things. I know that they're getting a taste of food and they know what to eat. The other thing that I'm doing is they're um, teaching them that it's rewarding for me to come to the enclosure and feed them. So they know that associate me with their with food. Now you can do this with any crested gecko of any age. Um, I give them treats out of spoons, anything that I want to make sure that it gets more handleable. I do that kind of stuff. Now, when do I introduce crickets? I feed crickets and dubious to all of my crested geckos just so they can get used to, you know, something moving. It gives them exercise and entertains them. Um, I, I'll usually do it after the first week and a half to two weeks just because I want to make sure that they're eating their pangea or the rapashi food that they're getting um, at the, right off the bat. Now that comes to the next subject. You want to make sure that you're feeding your pet a variety of food. Why? This is my reasoning behind it. Couple things. Sometimes there's a shortage of some foods and you just can't get it. I want to make sure that my crested geckos are eating everything um, because one food might have something, one might not. So these are the three diets that I normally feed. One, of course, is Rapashi. Rapashi is been doing this for a really long time. He knows his cracks the geckos and lychees, anything from New Caledonia he's an expert in. So he does really good uh, mixes. Now the Rapachi, some of their foods are a little not as tasty as other ones. So I'll feed um, different ones. So Pangea does a really good job at putting great tasty food for them. I don't, I'm not a crested gecko but I'm assuming it's tasty because they usually clean their plates. So I'll feed Pangea too because it's the second major company that sells crested gecko food. Now the third feed, food that I feed is mashed up food that I do myself. So what I do is I either feed mangoes, peaches, and sometimes depending on the season I'll do some blueberries and so on. Um, just to give it a different taste because you'll be bored just drink, eating two foods a day or for the rest of your life. So I'll do that, apricots, sometimes figs. So I'll make a fruit smoothie that goes in it. Sometimes I'll do papaya and banana. They, they seem to like that too. 
and I'll put in a little bit of sometimes a little bit of honey if I want them to put on some weight or I'll do um, I also do something that a lot of people don't realize I use cricket flour so what cricket flour is is actually mashed up crickets that they make into flour so I'll add that to the fruit mix because I want to make sure that they're getting enough protein so they can grow out to be big, big and strong crested geckos so I'll feed that too now, I'll feed, the, the reason I feed those three dyes again is because I want to make sure that they're eating anything so when they go to their forever homes, they know they'll eat anything and lick everything up. And of course, they get crickets once a week. Now, the last thing that I, people always ask is like, well, when do I know what to add to the, to the enclosure and when do um, I move them up? So my crested geckos stay in their sweater boxes until they're about 10 grams. To 10 grams, they move to a bigger enclosure, and when they're around 25 grams, they move to a big enclosure or to a breed, or if they're over 25, sometimes they grow a little fast, they'll go to like a breeding size enclosure before I start breeding them. So I'll usually put like two females in there, the males will be by themselves, um, but back to the subject at hand, at 10 grams, I move them to a bigger enclosure. Now of course... You know, for hatchlings, you can keep them in sweater boxes, or you can keep them in the small Exoterra minis, um, which, you know, they, it's just a little nicer than a sweater box. Now, around two weeks, when I know that they're pooping and they're doing great, I'll add some type of foliage, like um, some leaves, uh, the artificial leaves, or I'll do the Exoterra, or the, they have a good ones that are plastic um, vines that you can just hang on the enclosure like you can see. Um, as I do this video, there'll be random pictures posting, so you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'll put those in. Um, I'll make sure that it gets misted every day. And one tip that I always tell people, make sure that you know you uh, give enough ventilation. I find that a lot of people uh, don't give enough ventilation to your crested geckos, and that just breeds bacteria and actually causes the crested geckos to die. So. You want to make sure that you miss them in the morning and so they miss them at night. I miss mine twice a day, but sometimes once a day is good. Um, and you make sure that it dries out. You got to make sure that it, there's enough circulation that it dries the enclosure out. So that way, you know, they ha they can, you know, it can regulate just like the whole environment. If you, you know, you get the dew during the, uh, right before morning, it dries out because of the sun and they're outdoors. And then at night, there will be another dew or will be a rain. So in their natural environment, that's how it goes. I find a lot of people have problems with their crested geckos because they either have too much humidity or it's too dry. So too dry, you can fix because you can spray more. But too much humidity, you can't. Um, and the requirements for their humidity will be above. You'll see um, the humidity requirements. Everybody says it's anywhere from 50 to 70%. Uh, that's usually pretty good. Also remember that you don't need any heating uh, for crested gecko hatchlings. They like to be room temperature. Anywhere from 72 to around 78 is ideal. During the summer they can take higher temperatures. They can take like 80, 82. Don't kill me for that. A lot of people like get upset when they say, Oh my god, the crested geckos can't all die after 82. That's not true. My room automatically gets in the 80s um, during the summer because it's summer but it cools down during the winter. So what happens is, it just naturally fluctuates, just like it would in a while. And I haven't had any loss because of heat. So what it is is that they can't tolerate that heat forever. So as long as you have a winter and a cool down, that works great. 82 degrees year round is not gonna work for you, Crested Gecko, it will most likely die because it's stressed out all the time. But during the summer, just like us, we, don't, we, de we tolerate the heat, but we don't deal with it all the time. Alright guys, so hopefully that was instructional for you. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below or email me at myfirstpetreptile at gmail.com. Of course, check out our website. We'll have a blog. There's Crescent Gecko care sheets in there. Uh, I will be updating everything very soon. It just is a lot of work. I hope you guys don't realize that, that I put a lot of work and effort into it. And also, check out me on my Instagram at in my first Instagram, I'm sorry, my first pet reptile uh, dot com. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sluttering today. Um, check me out on Instagram at my first pet reptile, of course, Facebook, Facebook at, at my first reptile, 
And Twitter, we have, I have a Twitter account, myfirstpetreptile.com.